<laughs> okay. What semester are you in? First year, second year, third year, fourth year? Oh, me? Yeah. Uh, this is my second year. Second year. And what about you, Courtney? I technically would be going into my fourth year because I um, transferred from an old school and I did college before, took a break. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Combination of everything. Yes, I do. I did finish my associates. So I'm um, trying to work on almost finishing my bachelor's. Oh, all right, good. And let me check. I think you should be three persons. Okay, welcome to the course of organizational behavior. It is very good course for you. I hope that at the end of the course, you will have a appliable knowledge for your daily life, also for your business life and organizational life. So let me know what is the meaning of behavior. How can we define behavior? What is behavior? What is the difference between behavior and other parts of our mental, our mind? As a person, not as an organization, not as a businessman or woman, or not as a manager or leader, as a person, as an individual, what is the meaning of behavior? How can you distinguish behavior from other parts of your psychology, our mindset, or mentality. How do you think? It has a lot to do with our actions. Actions, yeah. Other things? What are the features of an action? Is thinking an action or a function? A function. A function. What is the difference between action and function? My heart has a function or has an action? A function. A function. While you are talking to me, is it a function or an action? An action. Yes. What is the difference? It's action. <laughs> Yeah. Amy, say. It's action. What is the difference between action and function? With this example, with this sample, we talk about it. For example, my heart has function, but our talking is an action. What is the difference with these examples? Action is the way. So it's like um, you need to express like yourself. Uh huh. One functions has experience, but action has expression. What does it mean? It means that actions are observable mm. and measurable. Mm. What functions are the, at the best value? Functions are measurable. You can, for example, check your heartbeat here. Yes, the amount of heartbeat. But you cannot see the heartbeat. It's not observable. Yes, by the monitor, for example, if you go to CCU and ICU warm, yes, you can see the graphs about the heart actions. Behavior is some part of your mind, of everything, which has two elements. One, observable. Two, measurable. What about the feelings? Can we observe our feelings? Courtney, can you observe, for example, your 
your friend's feelings or not? Observe. Yes. How yes. can you observe my happiness? Um, I can judge your um, body language and uh -huh. your expressions. You use the main word. You can judge, not observe. Oh. <laughs> can interpret, not observe. My hand is observable. You don't need any interpretation, any judgment about my hand. It is objective, not subjective. It is external, not internal. But you cannot see my happiness. You can judge me, interpret me about my, for example, facial expression. If I have a flat affect, I don't show any feeling in my face expression, you cannot judge You cannot judge anything about my feelings. Uh, what about the thoughts, about the thinking? Can you observe? So how can I show you my, my thinkings? Can I show you or not? What is the monitor for our thoughts? How can we show others how we think? For example, you are a manager and you want to show your thinking to your employees. How do you want to do it? By your? You have to tell them, speak to them. Yes. Language. Communicate. Communication are the major parts of the major pathways to express your thinking. Is it only about the language? And is it about only words and verbal language or not? Can I express my thoughts only by my verbal language or not? If not, what other parts of what other types of expression we can use for express our thinkings, except of verbal language. Other parts are? Written. Yeah. Other things. The total concept is nonverbal language. The total concept. Oh yeah. What are the elements of nonverbal language? As you said, body language. As we say, tonality. Tonality is the, how you express your words. Only 7% of the meanings transfer by the words. Only 7%. 38% is transferred by the tonality you use for that word. For example, I say, Hey guys, and I say, hey guys, I say, hey guys. It's the same word, only 7%. By the tonality, how I express the word have 38% of the meaning. And 55% of the meaning of communication is transferred by your body language. I say, hey guys, I say, hey guys, I say, hey guys. The same word, with different tonality, with different body language. What is the problem of cyberspace? In cyberspace, in internet, in chat room, in WhatsApp, in other parts, you miss the body language. You cannot see the other people. So words have a lot of trans transporting the meaning, transition the meaning. And sometimes you said, are you angry? I said, in text, I said, no, why? He said, I don't know. You are talking like an angry. You cannot hear my voices because it is text message. But text message has some type of tonality. It is very important because a lot of misunderstanding, especially in organizations, is related to the misunderstand about the behaviors, interpretation of behaviors especially by the boss, especially by the chefs, especially by the managers. Okay, in chapter one, after that, I wanted you to ask you about the meaning and the details meaning of behavior. 
In chapter one, we are talking about the preface and inter overview of organizational behavior. Can you say me a definition of organization? What is organization? It is very, very basic question. You are gaining your, uh, your bachelor degree in organizational courses. For example, business, for example, uh, management, leadership. But the basic question is, what is organization? Is family an organization? Is government an organization? No, only business parts, only factories or something like them are organization. What is organization in practice, not in the meaning? The meaning something which has been organized. Thank you. It is organization. I know it. In practice, in real world, what is organization? And what is the difference between organization and business and corporate, for example, or factories or companies? There are some little, very, very, very detailed differences. Totally, what is organization? The young brains should answer me. What is the organization? What is the definition of organization? As you know, no problem. Everything is your mind. Talk about it. Nothing? Okay. Come with me to look at the chapter one and find the organization and the meaning of organizational behavior. I am psychologist. I know about the behavioral parts of human beings in organizations, internal and external. But very purely in psychology, that part of mind which can we see and observe and measure, it is called behavior. And a group of elements, a group of components that work together for reaching, for achieve a shared meaning, a shared goal, it is called system. System is a group of elements, a group of components who work together hand to hand for achieve a shared meaning, not a single, a shared meaning, a shared goal. It is called system. System and systematic thinking is the basis of organization. What is the meaning of organized in word, in real world, not in organization. Organize is something at the correct place. Right person, right time, right place. It is organized. And having together interaction, it is called communication. Very simple question. What is the difference between connection and communication? Is there any difference or not? I am knocking at the door. I am trying to connect or communicate. Which one? Communicate. Communicate other thing. I mean. Um, I mean, your name is Jaime or Haimi? Haimi. Haimi. Okay. Is there any meaning for Haimi? Haimi, there is the meaning. Like it my name is in like in Korean. Uh-huh. What's the meaning so, of in Korean? Haimi. So the definition of my name is like to be like, um, it's, I think it's, um, it's hard to, um, describe in English. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but I really like my name because my name, it was my, when I was a baby, mm -hmm. my I think it was my my dad or my grand grandfather. He named for me. He named my name That's for great. me. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. So, how do you think about the differences between communication and connection? 
I am knocking at the door and Courtney says, we are trying to communicate. How do you think? Do you think we are trying to connect or communicate? I think it's the, um, to communicate like each mm -hmm. other. Uh-huh, yes. Your computer, your internet, never loses communication. It loses connection. Your internet is connected or disconnected. You don't say it is communicated or discommunicated. It is not about your internet. Do you use, my computer is communicated to the lane? No. You say my computer is connected to the lane, not communicate because of two parts at first. There is a basic goal oriented meaning in communication. Meaning is the basic part of communication. Communication is meaningful connection. But for example, between the electricity, between the lane of company and your internet and your computer, there is no meaning. It is only about the electricity and other parts. But you don't have any connection with your friend. You have communication with your friend because your friendship has a lot of meaning for you. So if they are a stranger, you don't have any communication. You have connection. You don't know them, no meaning. It is the best part of the communication. Communication is meaningful connection. And at the second part, communication has goals. Communication is goal-directed. You have some pre-assumptions, some assumptions, some goals, predefined for your communication with your husband, with your wife, with your boyfriend, with your girlfriend, with your mom, with your dad, with significant others in your life, you have communication, not connection. Connection is very simple. So every communication has some types of connection, yes. But every connection may be transferred to communication, maybe not. Okay, what is organizational behavior? Organizational behavior, or OB, is the study of human behavior in organizational settings. At first, why it is called organizational behaviors? It is an organizational, industrial, business, or other parts, educational, occupational setting. It is called organizational setting. We are looking at the roots and the process and the project and the goals of human behaviors in, that, in those settings. At first, organizational behavior or OB is the study of human behavior in the organizational setting. Two, the interface between human behavior and the organization. This is organization, this is human. At first, we are looking at the human behaviors in the organization. Second, the interaction, input and output, giving and taking between the human and between the organization, interaction. It is the interface or interaction. And third part, the organization itself. Human, organization, interface. These complex is called organizational behavior. The study of human behavior in organization, organization. It's on the interface between human behavior and organization. You can see this, this chart is the nature of organizational behavior. And you see, as you see, the field of organizational behavior attempts to understand human behavior in organizational setting, organization set, and the individual organization interface. As illustrated here, you can see it. The areas are highly interrelated, overlap. You cannot separate very, very, very carefully. This part is human behavior, this part is organization, this part is interface. They are overlapped together, highly interrelated. Human behavior, individual organization interface, organization and an overall atmosphere, an overall environment about this complex, this industrial, organizational, or business space 
complex. Why? You will be a manager. You will be a leader, mid-level manager, high-level manager. Why study organizational behavior? Why do we need to study the behavior of human beings in the organization? Why do we need to study the organization itself? And finally, why do we need to study the interface between organizations and human behaviors? Why? What is your answer? Why we need to study organizational behavior? Do we need or not, Courtney? Yes, I think we study it so um, we can understand why we are doing our actions and why other people are behaving that way and the actions they do. So we can better ourselves and then therefore better everyone around us, our coworkers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is the benefits of organizational behavior for profit of organization? Is there any uh, monetary, is there financial profit for organization or not? How can we transfer organizational behavior studies to profit, to benefit of the organization, financial profit or financial benefit? Because when employees are more satisfied and more productive and- yeah. Thank you. Correct. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. The major word is satisfaction. The major word. The benefit of organizational behavior is to finding some ways to create satisfaction, belongingness to organization. If the employees have a good belongingness to their organization, they are very proud to work in this organization. They have a lot of belongingness, sense of belongingness to the organization. Do you know what is the most, with the, high, with the highest sense of belongingness in the world, which company creates the highest sense of belongingness in their employees? Do you know what is the name of the company? Name is it Google? Um, sorry, Google is third, not the first. Google is one of the yes, but not Google. Facebook? What? Facebook. Uh, I am so sorry. It is the second one. <laughs> oh. The first one is a car company, so-called Toyota. Toyota has the highest sense of belongingness in its employees. They look at the Toyota like a family. They are not company employees, they are family members. I'm the son of Toyota, I'm the daughter of Toyota. And also, I don't know who is the mother or father of Toyota, but Toyota has a lot of children. Sense of belongingness. Combination of sense of belongingness with that traditional commitment-based culture of Japan, wow such a company, except of company, Japan has a very commitment-based tradition, culture. In addition to that culture, com company has itself created a lot of procedures, methods for creating sense of belongingness to the company for Toyota. Combination has a synergic effect, not energic effect, it is synergic effect. Something more than the effects of each of them alone. For example, one plus one is two. In synergic effect, one plus one is 2.1. That extra point is called synergic because this one together with that one. It is synergic effect. In protests, in religion, in family, in love, you can see the synergic effect, something more than one, 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 one. Together is something more than all of them plus together, okay? Because of that, yes, thank you. Both of you have indicated good points. The major part is satisfaction. The major part. Satisfaction creates loyalty, creates creativity. Also, Google is very good in this 
discussion in this topic. Very, very good. Facebook, I have heard, but I, but I am um, certain about Google, Toyota, Tesla. Tesla has a very good policy. We will talk about it. Study OB can help you become a better employee if you are employee. You can have some good knowledge about yourself. Observational, uh, organizational behavior is a type of self-awareness about yourself as an employee. Become a better manager. It is again, because what is organizational behavior, a study of behaviors of employees, managers, and together interface or interaction. When we are talking about the manager, we are talking about the organization. Manager is the icon of an organization. An extra question, do you know what is the difference between managers, leaders, and chefs, bosses, or not? What is your personal view about the differences? The differences between bosses, chefs, managers, and leaders. Is there any difference or not? If there, which? Courtney, you are muted. Can you repeat the question, please? What are the differences between managers, leaders, and chefs and bosses? Boss. Is there any difference between them or not? I want to say yes. What are the differences? So managers and leaders. I don't know how to word it. I know how I, I could like picture it in my brain. I just can't, I don't know how to uh, express it. Show, <laughs> how us to communicate. Show us your mind picture. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Jaime, are you there? <laughs> I mean, can you help her? It's me. <laughs> to, have a print, to, to have a print, to have an MRI print of his, of her mind. Um, so I think the difference between managers, leaders, managers and boss. Boss? Leader Does and boss leader. means the chief? Boss, chief manager boss. and leader. Yeah, chief, boss, yeah. Oh, so I think it means like, um, so managers, like they do the like in the company, mm -hmm. um, in the company, so managers, they like, um, it's like they manage the project, like for example, like, uh -huh. and then they want to plan, plan about the, like how to do with the project or leaders. I think it's really important like for companies because um, they are the, I think leaders are the captain, captain mm -hmm. of the company. Like, can I give an example? Yeah. Because my father right now, he's the boss. Mm -hmm. He's the, ch the chief of the, it's, he's the CEO. Mm -hmm. So it means the chief of, um, I forgot the E, E means, uh, <laughs> Chief oh, of Executive yeah, Officer. Executive, executive Officer. Yeah. Officer. Yes, he's, my dad is the um, boss. So he has the managers under his, um, under his, uh, like, authority, yeah. Yes. His CEO is the general manager. Courtney? Yeah. So the boss um, of how I could say it is like a boss supervises you and the leader leaders are uh, usually the ones that and are the like the inspiring the inspiring ones. Um, mm -hmm. Other things. Why these days discussion about the leadership is very popular and very important. A lot of people in sociology, in psychology, in industry are talking, are searching, are studying about the leadership more than the characteristic of managers, more than the characteristic of boss or employees or entrepreneurship and leadership 
are the hottest topic in the studying of organizational behaviors these days. For example, in the last decade, why leadership is such an important topic in this uh, field of study? Why? What? Why leadership? Why not management? Why not bosses? Why not, for example, investors? Why leadership? What is the specific features of leadership? Let me help you. They they motivate. Yes. They but inspire. The, but inspiration and motivation. Influence. Are not the first functions. They are the first functions of coaches, not leaders. Also, all good leaders are coaches, but all coaches are not good leaders. Because of that, we have a specific. Uh, one of the my work is executive and life coaching. We have a specific field in the coaching so-called leadership coach for leaders we have some coaches so what are the main and specific features of leadership at first leaders are talking and thinking about the future not the present moment but managers are talking and thinking and maintaining the present status the status quo Leaders are future oriented. Managers are present oriented. It is the basic part, basic difference between managers and leaders. Managers are marketers. Leaders are market makers, new market or new productions. New mindset, for example, if is Jeff Bezos a leader or a manager? With this definition, do you know Jeff Bezos? The uh, Amazon, um, Amazon creator. Amazon owner, Amazon, yeah. Is he a leader or manager with this definition of leader and manager? Uh, I would say leader. Why? Because he is... Well, because well, I guess you're, <laughs> I need to step away from, oh, he doesn't have to, how much is he worth? Billion? <laughs> the, um, well, the manager is worried about now, but he has to keep up with all the new, um, the new websites and all the other, everybody's in e-commerce now. So he's got to be thinking of the future. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Tell me the name of three first persons in the present business world. One of them is Jeff Bezos. Another one who is in your mind. One of Mike. the greatest creative persons in industry. He's the I icon, of, icon of novelty, icon of creativity. The founder of PayPal and the founder of Tesla, who is it? Oh, um, I know his name. Oh, I love Eva, his name. Uh, uh -huh. um, Elon? Yeah, Musk, Musk. Elon Musk, yeah. Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk. And for example, do you know the site of uh, Aladdin in China? Say again? Aladdin, Aladdin in China. It is a site like Amazon in America. Um, no, I'm not familiar with that. It, he is one of the greatest businessmen all around the world. For example, these people. I say he is Ma. Yeah, his name is Ma. I forgot his first name, but the family name is Ma. A very famous and very creative. The site of Aladdin, the founder of site of Aladdin. It is something like Amazon in China. Very, very popular and very uh, rich man. These are leaders. Why? Because when you are studying the history of Amazon, you see it is very simple, very, very simple idea. If you want to go to bookshop, don't go. Offer here and we will deliver your book. Very simple. Oh, sorry, you need pen? I will bring you pen with your book. Oh, every book reader, every bookworm loves, like me, coffee. 
Okay, Dr. Tagavi, we will bring you your book, your pen and pencil, your mug, and your coffee. Wow, your computer doesn't work so good? Thank you. In addition, your book and pen and pencil and coffee and mug will be you, bring you everything you need. Amazon change the shopping culture all around the world, all around the world. It is something after Amazon, I think the only thing that affect the shopping culture all around the world was COVID-19. Amazon and after that COVID-19 coronavirus changed the shopping culture. Amazon very slowly, COVID-19 very rapid, changed the shopping culture. And also Elon Musk, he said, okay, we don't have any international bank. I will create a system that can change money all around the world, free of charge or very, very little rate of interest, which was called PayPal. PayPal was created by, and after this great creation, he says, we are, creating a lot of air pollution in the world. And he loves California. He said, for 2035, we don't, we will not have any, any, any gasoline fuel car, any in, in California <coughs> after 50 years from now. And for the first time, he built a car fully electronic, <coughs> it is called Tesla. And now he is talking about going and journey to moon in the company so-called SpaceX. <coughs> these are the gods of creativity and novelty. Because of these people, we should study the organizational <coughs> behavior because these are leaders, these are not managers. You don't have think, thinking about the future. Not only maintaining at the best scenario, maintaining the functions of present moment. Understanding how people behave and why they do what they do. It's a very basic question. Why do you do what you do? Why you do, why do you do what you do? Why do you study business? Why do you study manager, management? Why do you go, for example, to daily practice? Why do you love? Why do you sleep? This is the basic question of every aspect of life. Why? Why is the most important not applicable. It is not the most applicable. It is the most important word. But what is the most applicable word? Applicable question word? After why we should say? How? I love it. I love it. Great. How? It's so empirical. So operational. It is so conceptual. Why is about concepts? about the description and explanation. But where we are, where we are talking about how we are talking about the prediction and control. These are the four duties, four functions of science. Science has four functions. <coughs> One, description. Two, explanation. Three, prediction. And four, control. At first, you should say, what are you observing? It is the basic function of science. It is called description, what we are observing. And two, finding the causality and effect <coughs> between the elements we are observing. It is called explanation, the second function. Based upon what are we observing and why we are observing this, why, what are the causality effect <laughs> At the third part, we should have some prediction about the future actions based upon what we are. It is called prediction. 
when you observe, <clears throat> when you explain, when you have some prediction, after that, we should have something for console the future in our hand. It is called technology. Technology is the consoling part of science. Basic science is talking about description and explanation. But technology is about console the future. Okay. Welcome, Trinika. Okay, again, organizations that successfully implement organizational behavior principles have motivated, engaged employees whose goals align with business strategy, the sense of belongingness, like family. Strong leadership and direction, it is very important. What are the elements of motivation? Two elements of motivation are when you are motivated, you are directive, you have some specific direct for your life when you are, and you have force, you have power to do based upon your direction. So force and directions are the components of motivation for everybody, for every organization, for every society. When we understand that the society has a good motivation, when we see them that the members of the society have one single unique direction and one single unique force and power to achieve that at the end of that direction. And uh, better bottom lines, the basic lines and management process. Is there any question? Okay. Management functions. At first, planning. A question. Life is all, all life is problem solving. All aspects of life is problem solving. Every aspect, managerial, love life, sex life, family life, social life, business life, all aspects of life is problem solving. You always have some problems and you should solve them. What is the basic, what is the first stage of problem solving? What should you do at first when you want to solve a problem? Is it not planning? Like plan? Make a plan? Planning is not the first stage. Yes, you should plan, but it is not the first stage. When you want to know what is, when you know, to want to know my problem, what is the question you ask me? What's the problem? Thank you. <laughs> so the first stage of problem solving is problem definition. It is very important. A lot of people has misunderstood that yes, we know our problems. And I asked them, what is your problem? They said, uh, mm, uh, uh, mm. they are confused. Problem is like our goals. A lot of people have a lot of wishes, desires, but they don't have any smart goal. Do you know what is a smart goal? Why an, like a, an achievable goal like that's actually maintainable? S four S four. Yes, you like, are. Uh, the, S4. Like I, I want to lose weight, but I, I can't say, oh, I want to lose fifty pounds by next month. But I can yeah. say, oh, I want to so lose five all, pounds. S four. Yes, S four. Smart. Um, S four. Specific. Specific. Okay. And M four. As you said. Manageable? Measurable. Measurable. Measurable, yeah. You should have some measure for, yes, I am going to my goal or not. And A4, achievable. And R4, realistic. And T4, timely. It is a smart goal. 
with five components, smart goal, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Based upon these factors, at first, you should define your goal. What is your problem? What is your goal? A lot of people has a lot of great wishes, but they don't have any specific goal. It is like a pizza. Do you eat all the pizza at one jumping? No, slice by slice by slice. Yes, your wishes is like a whole pizza. Your goals are the slices. Because of that, your goals are achievable, but your wishes are not achievable. Even you cut them down to the very, very short time and achievable goals. First goal, second goal, third goal. Oh, your final goal is your dream, your wishes. A lot of people only think about their dreams. If I ask them, is there any operational planning, any operational definition for their, their, their dream? They said, no, no. I know that I should have only dreams. Why? Because Martin Luther King Jr. said, I have a dream. And after that, I said, yes, I know. But Martin Luther King Jr. created a good plan for his dream. So after definition, it is planning, yes. At this part, we go to the planning as a management function. And after that, organizing different chapters, different elements organized together. Leading, not leadership. Leading is a leader in management function is a little slighter than leadership as a whole leadership. And controlling, it's like driving. What is your destiny? It is like that you start your car and says, go to GPS. And GPS asks you where? And so it is not important, only go. It's not important for me that where I want to go. If you, say, if you uh, watch the movie, it is called Alice in the Wonderland. I in saw one part that of movie, movie. Yeah. In one part of the movie, the cat asked the Alice that it is a crossroad. And the guide cat asked Alice, where, which direction do you want to go? Alice says, it is not important for me. And cat says, if it is not important for you, which direction, it is not important which way. Every way you go, finally you will reach a destination. It is true, but it is not efficient. It is true, yes. Everywhere you go at the end of the every way, yes, we can find a destiny. But after ending the way, you will find that, sorry, it was not my destiny. Because of that, the first stage of problem solving is problem definition. Resource used by manager, what are the resources managers can use? It is human at first, human beings are the basic elements of organization, most important elements, financial, physical, like instruments of an organization and information, as you know, in the last 400 years, our ages has changed from different stages and passed from different stages. For example, about uh, 400 years ago, we lived in the age of Renaissance, in the age of industry. And after that, with banking system and producing more money, we came to the age of capital. And after that, in the first years of 20th century, we entered the age of industry. And now we are at the age of information. Information is the most important thing you should know. 
especially because of internet, it is very important to know about the valid information because you can access a lot of fake information, wrong information. It is called data pollution. Have you heard about this phrase, data pollution? It is like air pollution, sound pollution. It is data pollution. What is the meaning of data pollution? That when you go to internet, you have a lot of unrelated or wrong or false data about the subject you are looking for, you are searching. It is called pollution. Because of that, some good universities like California Miramar University provide a very, very validated database for students. It is called LEARN, L-I-R-N. When you go to LEARN, a lot of good databases are there. And the article, scientific article, article academic article are in these databases, which when you are not a student of the CMU, you should pay money for the articles. But come, uh, university has provided this data, this system learn for the students. Why? Because going out of the data pollution, planning, organizing, and controlling. Well, what are the critical managerial skills? Technical skills, interpersonal skills, conceptual skills, and diagnostic skills. Technical skills are skills necessary to accomplish a specific tasks within the organization. Interpersonal skills and conceptual, the ability to think in the abstract, it is very important. And diagnosis, to ability to understand the cause and effect relationship and recognize the optimal solutions to problem. I have a question. Planning as a skill is in what type of skills? Planning is a technical skill, is an interpersonal skill, is a conceptual skill, or a diagnostic skill? Planning. Is it conceptual? Conceptual, the ability to think in the abstract. Thank you. Other offers, technical, interpersonal, diagnostic. Why you think that planning is a conceptual skill? Because you have to be able to think and uh, think outside the box and plan for the future. Yes. Abstract. Think about the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Based upon the symbols. Abstract is not imaginary. Abstract is meant thinking in concepts out of the box. Abstract is mean thinking about the future as you are looking at the future in reality, as it is real. You know that it is not real, yes, but as it is real. Planning, organizing, leading, controlling, and human resources, financial resources, physical resources, and it is basic managerial function, effective, an efficient attainment of organizational goals. The combination of <coughs> skills and functions, four function, planning, organizing, leading, and controlling, and four resources, human resources, financial resources, physical resources, and information resources. Okay. HR management, HRM. It is the basic and most important part of any organization. Why? What is the major function of HR? What is the major? We are talking about HR management. What is the major function of HR? Why it is so important? Besides if they're, um, if this HR is hiring, but they also like hire the applicants, but mainly um, keep the employees satisfied and protected and um, their voice kind of for the, um, do you, do you, are you, are, are you following what I'm saying? <laughs> you get what I'm trying to communicate. Yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I have a question. You said, right, that it, the first function of uh, HR department is about the hiring process. Yes. In most companies, I think so. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We are, we are uh, designing a course for you in Calumu, I think for the winter uh, session. It is uh, available for students about the job matching processes. 
extra courses, not in the M MBA or DBA or bachelor, extra courses, free courses, but in the university. About the job matching processes and job matching assessment, who is appropriate for which type of jobs and the personality assessment. Mm -hmm. For example, MBTI assessment or DISC assessment or GEO assessment and other things. Okay, it is for HR. HR depart department needs to assess people about the matching between the persons and the jobs. But it is not the only function of HR. As you said, creating an assessment data collection, gathering information about the level of satisfaction is very important. So what is the difference between HR management and general management? The data gathering about HR management transferred to general manager for final decisions. HR manager is a mid-level manager, but very important. Why? Because after general manager, the first one, the first department who is engaged, who is involved with the personnel, with the employees are HR employees, HR personnel, with other personnel. They are engaged direct with other personnel. Because of that, the data gathered by the HR management transfer to general management for main decisions. The set of organization activities directed at attracting, hiring, developing and maintaining an effective workforce. It is very important. The ratio between output and imp input is called effectiveness or efficiency. The ratio between output to input. It is always less than one. Why? Because the percentage of output input is wasted during the process of production. For example, output is, uh, input is 100, output is for example, 90. So efficiency is 90%. It is always less than one, less than 100%. But it's very important. The ratio is very important, one of the greatest criteria for diagnosing that a company has a good function as a financial function is about the efficiency. If the efficiency is very far from one, the company is going to the bankruptcy. Yes, always because of wasting time, wasting energy, wasting money, always regularly, always output is less than input, yes. So the ratio of output to input is less than one. It is good, we know it. But finally, it should be near one. Other things, questions organizational be help HR manager answer. Question one, which applicants should be hired? The hiring process, what are the criteria for hiring? Which rewards will be more motivating than others when you are hired? We want to motivate you to, get, to give you some motivation toward our organizational goals. And based upon the reward and punishment system, we are talking about the reward system here. What are the reward system and which reward will be more motivating than others? It is the nature of rewards. Financial rewards, social rewards, prestige rewards. These are the type of rewards. It is a false and very, very old fashioned thinking about that only the applicable reward, good reward is financial reward. No, it is old fashioned. When you give your identity to your employee, yes, you are our son, you are our family members. And they see that yes, you are protecting them as a father, as a mother, as a family manager, it is very, very more effective than for example, financial rewards. So which rewards will be more motivating than others? In addition to gathering data about the efficiency of rewards, you should gathering data about the culture of the organization. We will talk about the organizational culture. It is very important. In some cultures, some specific type of rewards are more efficient than other types of rewards. The strategic context of organizational behavior. Have about 10 minutes. Yes, it is good. About 10 minutes break. And after 10 minutes, I will be here to continue the 
study the session. And at the end of the session, we have 15 minutes for your weekly course. After 10 minutes, I will see you again. Okay. Okay. So, yes, for I am back from my break. Can you see me? Yes. That's good. So we can go to the chapter two. Chapter two is about the changing environment of organizations. It's always that's a specific environment for changing our environment. Organization is a living being, like human beings, changing and changing and changing. And you should manage and you should adopt yourself as a manager, your employees, with the external and internal changing environment inside and outside of the organization. At first, we are talking about the this figure, environment has five parts, globalization, diversity, technology, ethics, and corporate governance, employment relationships. And finally, they are interactions with the organizations. It is changing environment of organization. Types of diversity and barriers to inclusion. Diversity. The variety of observable and unobservable similarities and differences among people. It is diverse. It's a very simple definition. Similarities and differences. The variety of observable and unobservable similarities and differences among people. Types of diversity. Surface level. At the base level, it is surface level diversity can be seen directly, for example, race and gender. There are very, very simple and easy observable diversities. Race and gender, female and male, black, white, Asian, Arabic, and, 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 okay. It is surface level, very, very simple diversity. Deep level cannot seem be directly. For example, goals and skills. We cannot see the differences between people among people at their skills. For example, you know that we have three levels of learning, simple learning, skillful learning, and master learning. Simple learning, now you are doing some types of simple learning. I am instructing you, I am teaching you, you are hearing and after that taking some notes and after that is studying. Studying and working and working and studying, you will go to the stage two, skillful learning. And after five years, some types of management, some concepts of management and business, if I, you are in a sleep and I wake you up and said, for example, what is the principle of 20 to 80 persons? You said, yeah, 20 persons and 80, that, 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 And after that, you will sleep again. It is master learning. Queen of your mind, deep in your mind. Some like the basic, for example, example, basic, the operation of mathematics. They are master learning. And separation diversity, differences in position or opinion. It is not about the level. It is about the character. It is about the opinion. At first, it is about the characteristic of a person, like race, like nationality, like gender, like, I know, I don't know. How do you think about the nationality? Nationality is about surface level or deep level? Nationality is surface level diversity or deep level diversity? Surface? Nationality. Nationality is surface level or no, deep level? But I think it's surf, surface. I think it's surface. Okay, yes, I think too. 
I know that I cannot straight and direct see the nationality, but I can have some guess about the race, about the gender, about the nationality, about the ethnicity. But I don't have any guess about the skills of people, goals of people. But people have a lot of variety and diversity in their goals. And suppression differences in position or opinion. And in variety, meaningful differences in a certain type or category. For example, knowledge, functional background. It is a diversity in variety, not in separation. So we can have directly seen surface level, not directly seen deep level, differences in position or opinion. It's a separation diversity. And in functional background, in knowledge, and in category, it is variety. And disparity, differences in concentration of valuable asset, for example, payment, status, authority. These are different types of diversity. And the other uh, types of diversity and barriers, we have projected trends in US diversity by 2050. Population will become older after 30 years. Proportion of whites will decrease in America after 30 years. Which uh, race do you think that will be the major population, major portion, proportion? Hispanic, Asian, Chinese, Middle Eastern? Which race or which ethnic do you think will be dominant in America after 30 years from now? Is there any guess or not? Hispanic? So I think in uh, California will be Hispanic, yes. I think because now in America, the second formal language is Spanish. Spanish, yeah. Yeah. Not only in California, all, all the, the states of America. Yes, I just, um, I recently moved from Florida, which is um, very valuable to no Spanish living in mm -hmm. Florida also, especially like Southern Florida. Yeah. And proportion of Blacks, Asians and Hispanics will increase. Also, I think the first proportion will be go up, will be increase will be Blacks. And after Chinese and I think Blacks, Hispanic and Asians. Asians, Middle Eastern or Asians. Also in America, when we're talking about Asians, we are talking about Far East, Oriental people. But for example, I am from Middle East and Middle East is a part of Asia. But in America, they don't call us Asians. They call Middle Eastern. I think, uh, sorry, Middle Eastern is a part of Asia. Geographically, it is part of Asia. But there's no. You are Middle Eastern, but Asian people or Oriental people or Chinese people or Japanese, Korean people and other, I say, yes, they are Far East. We are Middle East and the other part is Near East. Asian is mean Korean. Jaime, are you Korean, you said? I am Korean. Talent shortage will increase. Wow. This is the projected percentage change in the US labor force by age of, by age from 2006. Total years 70 and older, 65 to 74, 60 to 24, 25 to 54. The 36 percent is 55 to 64. The major part is 84 percent, it is 75 and older. Age diversity, reverse mentoring, preparing the junior employee with a senior employee to transfer technical or computer skills from the junior employee to the senior one. It is reverse mentoring. Why it is called reverse mentoring? What is the meaning of reverse here in the phrase of reverse mentoring? Because the younger person is teaching the older person. Regularly, when you are a mentor, regularly, not always. Regularly, you are older than your mentor. When I am a coach, regularly, I should be a little older than my coachee. 
but it is called reverse mentoring because it is about the new age of information, new technological transportation, technological um, information, technological skills. So your mentor is younger than you. It is diverse. It is age diversity. And generations by birth year. Senior 1922 to 1943. Baby boomers, 1943, 1960. Do you know what is the meaning of baby boomers? No. Yes. It was um, the, the increase of births after the um, Second World War. The generation that they were born just after the Second World War and their adolescence and early adulthood was near 1960 to 1970. It is baby boomers. From the end of World War II to the beginning of Vietnam War, they are baby boomers. And generation X, 1964 to 98. Do you know why it is called X or not? Courtney, do you know? Not off the top of my head. <laughs> it's because they don't have enough identity. Ending the Vietnam War and in the middle of Cold War with Russia in old Russia, not this Russia. CCSR and other parts, your generation is a very happy generation, very happy. Something like hippism, something like, for example, the best part of America history of 20th century of America, it is generation X. Very happy, very, very happy generation. Generation Y or millennials, some people that they enter the adulthood at the first of millennium. 2000. The business case for diversity. Diversity fosters creativity, innovation, and competitive advantage. Why? What is the relationship between the diversity and creativity, innovation, and competitive advantage? Why? Because everyone comes from different backgrounds and has different ideas and perspectives and they can come together to cultivate a new yes. idea. Yes. Where do you live? Hey, me, where do you live? What city do you live at? Now? Yeah. Uh, I live in, in California, San Diego. San Diego. And Courtney? I live in Oceanside. Oceanside, okay. For example, because of that, I asked this question. I live in Irvine and diversity of students in uh, uh, UCI, they said in a joke that it is not University of California Irvine. It is the California University of Chinese and Indians, UCI. Because of the major proportion also we, talk, we say the University of Chinese and Iranian. The major proportion of UCR is not white American, the major proportion. And you know that UCR, one of the highest creativity making uni, public university in America. Why? Because of the diversity, Chinese, Indian, Iranian, and also American. White American, Hispanic American, African American, and other parts. So diversity, as you said, will show us a lot of different aspects of everything in our life, in our business, in our management, in our leadership, and create a mixed cultural concepts. It's very good. For example, in leadership of America, in quality control, in quality circles, we have a Japanese old world, so-called Kaizen. Do you know what is the meaning of Kaizen? K-A-I-Z-E-N, Kaizen. I heard the word, I know yeah. the word. What's the meaning of Kaizen? You will be the next generation of managers, young managers. What is the meaning of Kaizen? It is about 1950, just uh, since 1950, it has entered to the 
industrials, uh, industrial engineering and quality of uh, quality circuits, quality controls. What's the meaning of Kaizen? It's a Japanese word. Mm, Kaizen? Yeah. Uh, Kai, so I think Kai means... Uh, hmm. No, you can find in the internet. It, it is oh. not necessary to translate word by word. Kaizen, K-A-I-Z-E-N, Kaizen. Kaizen? Yeah. You see that it means zero? I did, I did just Google it. Uh-huh. It says change for the better or continuous improvement. Yes. Yes. It's a philosophy. It's a mindset. Not from America. Not from my country, Middle Eastern. Not from Japan. From Middle East. From the Far East. From the Oriental countries. It is Kaizen. Getting better every day than yesterday. Getting better every day than yesterday. It is a philosophy. It's a lifestyle. But after entering very, very seriously, entering at the beginning of the 50s to the industry, especially in uh, heavy industries of America, like car industries or um, other parts of heavy industry, iron and steel industry, it became a lifestyle of quality circuits, lifestyle of quality circuits, all life of quality circuits covered by Kaizen concepts. Because of that diversity fosters creativity, innovation, and community. Kaizen is one of the examples of the good effects of diversity on the quality control, for example. Organizational performance increase when employees have a positive attitude toward diversity. The founder of Facebook says that the greatest risk in life is not to take any risk. The greatest risk in the life is not to take any risk. It is something like this sentence, positive attitude toward diversity, welcome to diversity. It's a good culture in America that everybody in all around the world says in facing with diversity, facing with problems. Also, it's American culture. Everybody out of America says, why? In America, people say, why not? We are open to accept everything. Why not? It is the culture of a positive attitude to new problems. When you see some opportunity in your problems for growth, your problems become your, do you know the word? When you create your opportunity, when you find your chances in your problems, you switch your problems to your challenges. Challenge is the opportunity to grow. Yes, the face of challenge and the face of difficulties is like them. There are a lot of similarities. They are like problems. But challenge is a problem that you switch, you convert this problem to the one opportunity to grow. It is called challenge. And all successful people love challenge. Culturally diverse team make better decisions over time than homogeneous ones. Homogeneous and it is very harmonized in the, with all similars, not diversity, not di difference, it is homogeneous. And the we to and Civil Rights Act prohibits discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. At this legally says in America that yes, there is no discrimination no, no segregation between people based upon their race, ethnicity, sexual orientation. Sexual orientation, not gender. Gender is only male or female, but sexual orientation, it is female, male, bisexual, gays and lesbians, all are sexual orientation. GLBT, 
all are sexual orientation, but sexuality and gender is only male and female or national uh, or origins. Barriers to inclusion. Like me bias. It's very good word, I love it. Like me bias. People prefer to associate with others they perceive to be similar to themselves. Is it good or bad in relationships? Do you love your partner? Is similar like you or not? Do you have any like me bias? I think it could be positive and negative depending on the situation. What situations have good and positive outcomes on which situation doesn't have any good outcomes? Like you said, Ala, for like personal relationship, like with my um, husband or like with my best friend, but to have a like me um, at in a workplace, if somebody, you know, is, has different beliefs or anything like that for me to judge them because they're not like me is, is not good in that situation. What totally like me best in opposition, opposite of diversity. Like me best is it based upon the similarities, not differences, not diversity. As a preference. So yes. you could, so you could show, wouldn't that be like showing favoritism too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Favoritism is the extreme, very, okay. very extreme state of likely bias, especially in organization, especially in hiring. Favoritism, yes. I love this guy to be here. Why? Because only <laughs> I only, why he or she be here? Because I love him or love her. Or I like her, for example, function even but it is not organizational function. I love his or her personality or his, he or she, one of my family members. It is favoritism. And as you know, favoritism has some uh, legal errors in organizations, not very huge errors, but some errors in organization, you can go to court and say, yes, in this organization, there are some types of not segregation or discrimination. Favoritism is very, very slighter than discrimination or segregation. But yes, it is something at the extreme state of like me bias, it is called favoritism. The stereotypes, mannerism, cliche, beliefs about groups and individuals based on the idea that all group members are the same. Stereotypes or false beliefs are pre-assumptions, are judgmental thinking about people, about Muslims, about Blacks, about Indians, about Asians, about white Americans. It is not important. It is a stereotype, a closed and inflexible approach to a race, to a population, to a nationality, to a color of skin and other parts. It is very, very dangerous for personal growth to have a straight stereotype. What is the best skill? What is the best approach to go out of the stereotypes, to break the stereotypes is out of the box thinking. Out of the box thinking is a type of thinking that you pass the current assumptions about everything you want to pass through. And after that, you will break the stereotypes. As one of the greatest singers in the history of rock, hard rock, he is called, his name is Jim Douglas Morrison. Jim Douglas Morrison is the singer of The Doors. 1971, he died in Paris. One of the greatest songs is called Burke on True to the Other Side. Burke on True to the Other Side. You know the night, you know the day divides the night, night divides the day. Burke on True to the Other Side. It is something like going up, going out, going through the stereotypes the mannerism in thinking and prejudice. 
outright bigotry or intolerance for other groups. Perceived threat of loss. Impending diversity efforts to thwart a perceived threat to one's own career opportunities. And ethnocentrism. Ethnocentrism is very famous. Very, please uh, keep in your mind this word. Some phrases, some words are very specific and you can use them in professional settings to show that, yes, I am professional. I know the professional words, the professional phrases of my job, of my career, of my education. One of them is ethnocentrism. Leader people know this, the meaning, the professional meaning of this phrase. Everybody know the, what's the meaning of, for example, a stereotype, yes. Psychologists know, sociologists know, accountants know, everybody knows what is a stereotype. But go to the street and ask somebody, other people that, sorry, what is the meaning of ethnocentrism? This is very, very different word to know. And professional word for a manager, for a leader, for a thinker. So please pay attention to the specific word of your proficiency as a manager, as a leader. Every aspect, every field of science management now is a science because you are in academy. It is not a free course, it is a bachelor degree. It is academy, it is university. Everything which is studied in university is a science. And every field of science, psychology, sociology, business, physics, chemistry, and other parts and other, other, other fields, every field of science has its professional vocabulary, vocabulary, professional language. It is very important to know them. At first, you will be so prestigious in your professional settings in contrast to other professionals. A lot of professionals doesn't know anything about the professional words, especially in America. Unfortunately, professionals in America, sometimes I think that, especially in humanities, like psychology, like sociology, like management, like leadership, a lot of them doesn't know, doesn't have a good fund of knowledge, a good fund of words about their proficiency. So pay attention to the specific work of your proficiency for the leadership. One of them is ethnocentrism. Ethno is the root of ethnography, ethnicity, ethnical, it is ethno. And centrism it is from the center. They believe that one's own language, country and culture are superior to all others. What are the historical example of ethnocentrism in America? that yes, our language, our country, and our culture are superior to all others. Cockless claim. Cockless claim, the white American, that they thought that yes, we are the king of America. And they fired other people, especially black people. They get black people fired, the home, uh, homes are fired, and they kill black people. Racism, it is something like racism, but it is not about the races. It is not about the ethnicity. Some detailed differences between races and ethnicities. It is called ethnocentrism. One of the greatest, one of the greatest problems in America for government, for federal government is to create equality between different racism. What was the uh, previous, the last challenge in America about the black people? was Black Lives Matter, the protest in all cities. It shows that until now, there have been a lot of efforts to create the equality between different races in America. Yes, it is completed, never it is completed. It is never completed in, in any, um, any country. We are always see discrimination, yes, segregation. Between, for example, in my country, between different races in America, between black people and for example, white people, but the degree has decreased, has decreased, has decreased. Why other people, other races in America has a lot of power? It is egocentrism. And an equal access to 
organizational networks. Women and minorities are often excluded from organizational networks, which can be important to job performance and career opportunities. When minorities and women doesn't have any good access to opportunities to organizational networks, it is obvious that their growth will decrease, will be so slow. It is barriers to inclusion. Managing diversity. Top management support is essential for successful diversity initiative. It's very important that the leader, the top manager, the first man or first woman of the organization support, yes, the diversity is good. And after the reciprocal mentoring, it is called, what type of mentoring it was called? Do you remember? Reverse mentoring. What was reverse mentoring? The mentoring from young people for old people. Now it is called reciprocal mentoring. Pairing senior employees with diverse junior employees to allow both individuals to learn more about the different group. Why senior employees with diverse junior employees? Why? Why diverse junior employees? Because you learn about each other. Yes, but why, for example, uh, junior employees with diverse senior employees? Why we choose junior employees at the diversity part, at the diversity side? Because they are senior, they are experienced, more experienced in the company. They are the hidden fathers of the company. They have a good sense of belongingness to the company. And younger and junior people are from diverse from other nations, other races, other religions. And they say, yes, come with me. We have a good knowledge. We have acknowledgement about the company. And other people, other employees that they are not senior and they are not from a diverse diversity part will accept the diverse junior employees. Why? Because they have the support of senior employees. Because of that, we introduce diverse junior employees to the company, to the other parts of organization with senior employees. The goal is not to eliminate biases, but to acknowledge and control them. It is not the function of organization to eliminate biases. It is related to the sociology, to the government, to the public culture. It is an organization. We have some jobs for making money, why not? It is not the function, but because of some biases, like, for example, like me biases, or some race-based biases, some gender biases, some ethical biases, because of those, we should acknowledge and control the biases. What is the meaning of globalization? What do you know about the globalization? It's international. What is the difference between international and globalization? We have a word so-called international. Why we created globalization? What's the difference? The difference? Yeah. between globalization and, for example, international. Globalization is um, like interior, um, integrate like um, different countries. And? Like, and the global and, economy. Mm -hmm, yes. Like business activities into the global economy. Yeah. We have an organization so-called WTO. What is the meaning of WTO? World Trade Organization. Thank you, World Trade Organization. And the concept is global village. 
all countries together are a village. It is global village with some kings, some superpowers. Economic superpower, for example, Japan, Germany, America, France, G5 or G7. These are the greatest countries around the world to lead the global village. Globalization is something, as you said, making some equal separation between different parts. And how do you think about the next king of economy in the world? And also I think just now. Do you think America is the king of economy just now in the world? Before, before Corona, not after Corona, before Corona. Is still America the king of economy in the world, the sultan of economy in the world or not? So between America and China? Which is your choice, China or America? Before COVID, America. Before COVID, America. And Jaime, how do you think? Mm -hmm. Do you think that America before co Corona, before COVID, was the king of economy in the world, or no? China was the king, uh, king of China? economy. I think it's like in like before. Um, China or America or any country you want to choose. Courtney choices were between China and America, and said before COVID, I think that America was the king of the economy. How do you think? India, China, Japan, Germany, US, Australia, France. Um, it, I think it's like, it depends on the, like, um, but GMP, gross national product, for example, a good criteria for deciding about it. Yes, like. In GMP, we know that the highest rate is for America mm. as the richest country all around the world, not as the best economical system because capitalism is not the best system. It is very, very discrimination between different parts of capitalism. It is not the best system, but America is the richest country in the world. But as a capital, as a king of capitalism, not as a king of capital, as a king of economy all around the world, even in America, a poll has shown, a poll finding has shown that a lot of American people think that China now is the king of economy all around the world. Before or after COVID, especially after COVID, yes. Globalization, the internationalization of business activities. So the target of globalization is business. It is not about the passport. It is not about the travel. It is about the business. It is about the WTO, World Trade Organization. Or World Monetary Fund. Two, the shift toward an integrated global economy. Integrated global economy, not integrated economy in one country. Factors increasing globalization, advances in communication and transportation, growth by expansion into international markets, control of labor, distribution and distribution costs, increase international competition, Current president of America, 
has deleted a lot of contracts, international contracts, for example, for air pollution and other parts, even for WHO. Do you know what is WHO? World Trade uh, Organization. No, that is WTO, what? It is WHO. Uh, H-O? Yeah, you should know. As the students of business, you should know this organization. WHO is, can you find it in internet? Do you need any help to find it? It is World Health Organization. WTO is World Trade Organization. For example, the current president of America, make America come out America from a lot of international contracts, like, for example, contracts with WHO. Why? Because he said WHO doesn't work so good for America because when COVID come in, America doesn't, uh, the WHO has, doesn't have any serious alarm for American people. I don't know if it is true or not. But international markets will be off after these actions because of that, a lot of people think that these current economical procedures finally will not make America great again. America will be so rich, but not so powerful. But why? Because the, this country will, will constant, continually will uh, lose its dominancy on the economy of the world. Because of that, a, little, a lot of economists and a lot of experts in the field of economy and business think that no, America should not come out of the international contracts. These are the power points of the country, of the economy, of the uh, for America. Cross cultural differences and similarities. Culture, a set of shared values that help people in a group, organization, or society understand which actions are considered acceptable and which are deemed unacceptable. What is the first word associated to your mind when I say culture? What is the first word? When I say, for example, Hispanic culture, Korean culture, Iranian culture, Asian culture, every type of culture. What is the first word associated to your mind when I say culture? Courtney, the first word is? Your oh. mind. <laughs> but um. the first word, don't think. <laughs> don't think. The first word associated to mind. It is the word association test. Mine, I come, my first one's uh, values. Values. And next one, Jaime? Mm. The first word when I say culture? Culture. For me, it's ceremony, virtual. Rituals. Oh, for me, I think it's the, yeah. I think it's the like tradition. Uh huh. That's tradition. A good one. Yeah. Yeah. Some people say that it is about, for example, religion, rituals, communication, traditions, standards. Culture says you what are our shared goals, our shared meanings of life in a basic and similar level of nationality, similar level of race, similar level of ethnicity, geographical. It is culture. A good question is that, at first, what is the difference between culture and history? How many years are the history for this type of country, so-called America? What is the year of, as the movie says, conquest of paradise? What is the year of discovering America? Do you know? 1494. Um, 1494. 1494. This year about 530 years, near. So how many years we have written History for Korea. Hi, me. Say me. Korea? How many years we have written documented history for Korea? You are Korean. 
something you know? for me? Yeah. I for your country, for awesome. your original country, how many years we have documented history, written history? Uh, history it for Chinese, Korean, and Japanese for that part of work. Over a thousand years. Is that correct? More than this. More than this. More. More than this. 1500? No, it's not 15. Near 1500, yes. Near 5000 years. 5000 years. Near yeah. 5000 years. For example, you have some books about yoga, about meditation, about traditional Chinese medicine. I know China is different, Korea is different. Uh, we are talking about the Far East, about the Oriental part of the world. And also about my country and my area of living, Middle East. It is near 3,000 years. And the specific my country, it is about 2,500 years. Approved at least 2,000. So what do we want to say? What is the relationship and also differences between <clears throat> history and culture. America has 500 years approved written New America, this type of country, which is called America. We are talking, no, we are not talking about the Indian Native American. No, we are talking about the white American and this type of country. We are talking about the Abraham Lincoln's, about the United States of America, 500, and 30 years of history and near 200 years of independency. Only a little more than 200 years, two centuries for independence. This type of, yes, we have this type of, for example, president and elections and civilizations. Is it good or bad? How do you think? Having a long history is good or bad? Having a long history is necessarily produce cultural daily behaviors or not? You, see, you can see in a lot of countries that a long history, long written history. Do you know what is the oldest country in the near America? oldest written history, the ancient history. It is? Um, what is the favorite country of Mr. Trump? Mexico. Yes, Mexico. exactly. Mexico has more than 3,000 years of history, written history, approved history, documented history very, very old country. All the countries near Mexico and with the uh, near America, this part of America, so-called North America, Latin American, and also Mexico has a great ancient history. And you see some types of historical rituals, especially in California, you can see it. Mexican ceremonies, Mexican rituals, and also Chinese, for example, New Year, Persian New Year. Is it good or bad? There's nothing about the goodness or badness of culture. There's no good culture or bad culture. We have matched culture and dismatched culture, matched with, with, with the current daily life. Sometimes, for example, in a city like New York, it is not good so to have a very long history. Why? It is about the business and economy. It is a wide and happy life city. But for example, in Utah, Utah, you know that the mayor is considered by church. It is very, very religious state, very religious. And it is surprising that the next state after Utah is Nevada, Sin City. The mayor of the 
Las Vegas is considered by the gamblers also. But after that is Utah. In that part of, for example, America, yes, history, culture, religion is very important. You know, I think the second or sometimes in some categorization, it is the first, the first state, the first location in earth, which is free than every other parts of the world is not America. Which part of America is very free, very liberal, more than every part of, more than each part of other part of world, which is California. The most liberal part of the world. They say sometimes Poland and Netherlands, sometimes. Some researchers show California is not the first, some research shows that yes, California is the most liberal part of the world in the earth. Culturally, historic, not historically, but culturally, humanity, freedom of speech and other parts. So based upon these discussions, we should know about the differences between culture and history. History about the documentation. But culture is that part of history that you can see in the daily life of a nation. That part is cultural behavior. For example, Thanksgiving is a cultural ceremony in America and also in this type of culture, English language culture, or Halloween, or Christmas, or for example, you know, 21st of March is the basic part of basic day of the week of happiness day. World happiness day is the 21st of Mars. Why? It is the beginning of the spring. And in my country, it is the beginning of the year. New year in my country is 21st of Mars. The first year of spring. We begin, we start the year with the spring and we end the year with winter. It is culture based. It is historical based. Okay. These are cultural differences. Why you should know about this at first because America is an immigrant country. You as a manager, as a leader, will face a lot of different cultures. You should know about them. Hopefully, you are experiencing it in the society. I know how many races are living in California, at least. Oriental people with three or four races, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Vietnamese, and Philippines, there are some cities in California. All people are Chinese or all people are, for example, Philippines or Vietnamese. And that other parts, Arab people and Persian, Persian in, in city of, uh, I live, Irvine and also in Los Angeles are a good minority. And black people, black American or African American. And what other races do you know in California? Asian people, Persian people, Arab people, Middle Eastern, totally Middle Eastern. And European people, not only white American, white American of the old European people, but now you see a lot of present European people. Courtney, what is your origin of country? Basically, family history. Family history, um, my strongest one is um, from Ireland and second is um, French. French, yo. Irish and French. Irish, French. And how many generations do you live in America? 100 years, 200 years, no, less than 100, what, less than one century. Do you know or not? One, 100. 100, yeah, okay. So originally about two or three generations mm -hmm. have been born here in America. Yes. You are white American. Why? Because you are. Now in California, you as a manager will face to a lot of cultures and you should know about it. Sometimes it is only from your experience. Yes, you are experiencing interfacing with other people. Sometimes you should know 
in details. Why? Because you want to hire them. You should know about, for example, a weekend of Jewish people. It is different from weekend of Muslim people. It's different from weekend of Christian people. For example, holiday for Christian people is Sunday. For Jewish people is Saturday. For Muslim people is Friday. In my country, the holiday, the weekend is Friday, not Sunday or Saturday. Sunday or Saturday are working day, weekday for us. You should know the differences. I know, is there any specific weekday for the Oriental people? I mean, for Korean or Chinese, is there different we, uh, the weekend or not? The same Sunday and Saturday. Do you know or not? In Korea, they have the uh -huh. weekend holidays for the yeah. workers. So maybe like the labor holiday. Ah, oh, labor holiday. It is Saturday and Sunday again. Uh, it depends on the days, the holidays. Hmm, not hardly. So weekends, what are the days of weekends in Korea? The same Saturday and Sunday. Like America, like Europe. Yes, it's the weekends are like Saturday and Sundays. Shared values, it is important to be shared. General observations about the differences and similarities in cross cultural and culture. Cultural and national boundaries may not coincide. Behavior in organizational setting varies across culture. Culture is one major cause of this variation. It is very important. I sometimes go to some stores, some companies that I think, for example, and I see that nobody is speaking in English language. Nobody. Why? Because every human, everybody in that company is, for example, Chinese people or Spanish people, or Persian people. All the employees, all the managers are, for example, Chinese people. And when you go there, you think that, so, sorry, it is not California, it is Beijing. Or it is Mexico City, it is not Los Angeles. Why? Whole members, whole employees, and other people in a company speaking one specific cultural language, cultural ceremonies, you should know about them, especially in some uh, countries like America. And an organization and the way they are structured appear to be growing increasingly similar. And the same individual behaves differently in different cultural settings and cultural diversity can be an important source of synergy. We talk about the synergic effect in enhancing organizational effectiveness. And the last part, it is about the specific cultural issues. Gessert Hofstra research shows that attitude and behaviors differ significantly because of values and beliefs that characterize different countries. We have two key words here, values and beliefs. These are the key words for gathering knowledge about the cultural differences. It is very important. Individualism, collectivism, power distance, uncertainty avoidance, and masculinity, and long-term orientation. These are the categorism, cat categorizes, and other partitioning for the cultural differences. For example, individualistic cultures and collectivistic cultures. Same in the name of the most individualistic cultures in the world. Individualistic culture is meant preference of individuals is more important than preferences of society. It is individualistic culture. Which country is the icon of individualistic freedom? the country you are living now. America is the icon of individualistic freedom all around the world. American culture, not only the geographical part of America, this type of looking at the world, 
The word we use for the looking at the word is world view. World view is the procedure, is the orientation. You are looking at the world. And on the oppositional part, collectivism, which country is the icon of collectivistic cultural biases in the world? All for one, one for all. It is in Far East, in Oriental part is everybody is for society. It is not socialism. Everybody is for family, for society, for a team. It is Japan. Japan is the icon of collectivistic thinking, collectivistic approach to, for example, economy, to management. Okay. Now you have 50 minutes, and I am here also. You have 50 minutes to take the week one quiz. Okay. And the quiz, the questions are multiple choices, very easy. And you can find the answer in the PowerPoints of week one about the chapter one and chapter two. Okay. Please don't forget to send your initial post. The initial post should be sent until this night, Wednesday night. I know that your course is Wednesday, but the total law, the total uh, policy of university is that if you want to gain complete grade of the initial post, which is 14, you should send it until the Wednesday midnight, which is this night. So please, after ending your quiz during the next two or three hours, send your initial post and I will check it. Is there any question? Be free to send me an email about the problems, about the question. Otherwise, we visit each other next Wednesday. Okay. Bye. I'm here also. I, do, I have a question for the, um, for the LE. Can, is it like from the choices that we could choose from of like uh, promoting organizational set, um, citizenship or enhancing team or individual, like from those choices? Uh-huh. Okay. You have some choices. You have four choices for answering. Do you, do you, uh, do you ask question about the quiz or not? Oh no, about the Ellie. Ali, okay, okay. Because it says the multiple of the 11 of the behaviors. Yeah. Is the yeah. 11, this the 11 week, choices? Yes, this week learning engagement is very personal. Also, I have attached, uh, sometimes I attach some uh, articles to your learning engagement. But this week is very personal. You can use your own opinion about the learning engagement. I need your own view about the organization. Okay, so whatever we think is the most effective for management. Uh-huh. Okay. It is very easy. For me, it is very important that you have your own opinion about the learning engagement. And in the other parts after that, you should use the academic and uh, scientific resources for approving your own view. It is very important. It is engagement. It is not assignment. It is very deeper. And I need your brain to work on the engagement, not copy paste, for example, from an academic source to your engagement. It is not good. Okay, and do we need um, one credible source, like from the learn? At least, at least. Okay. You have learn and you can find in the learn and you should know about the uh, this APA style. It is very simple. There are mm -hmm. some, uh, after one, time, one week you do, after that you will find the procedure. You should do your learning engagement. Okay. Don't worry about the grades. It is, for me, it is important to think and your knowledge, your attitudes is very important. Because after ending your undergraduation, you want to go to the professional society, professional atmosphere, for, for job society, and work as a manager. Mm -hmm. It is very important to learn how to analyze, how to gather information, and how to have a decision-making 
about the jobs. Learning engagement is because of that. Take your quiz. Have a good night. Okay. Bye. Thank you. You too.
I am finished with my quiz. What do you say? Mm, mm. I am finished with my quiz. Okay, okay. Have a good night. Okay, have a nice weekend. Bye. Bye.